I'm Professor Indra Vissegaran. Let's look at sample size. When we talk of sample size that we should choose for a research study, we have to look at four aspects. Precision, confidence level, variability in the population, and type of sampling plan. What we mean by precision is the variability of the sample mean compared to the population mean. So we want to decrease the variability or the sampling error so that the precision in relation to the population increases. Confidence level is how confident are we with the estimates of the sample that holds true with the population. Variability is how much variability is there in the population. So if there's a lot of variability in the population, then we need a larger sample. Type of sampling plan, it depends on how we, the research problem so different, there could be different levels of heterogeneity, and if there are different levels of uh, heterogeneity, we require more sampling. So when we want to determine the sample size, we take these four aspects into consideration. So the required sample size is the standardized confidence level, that is, uh, in business studies, the confidence level is 95%. And we take the standardized score of that, that is the Z score of that, and we take the square of that. And then we take the standardized population variability. So we take the population standard deviation variability in the population is the standard standardized population population variability and then we will take the if you don't know the variability in the population uh, then as a rule of thumb we use 0 0.5 then we multiply that by 1 minus standardized population variability divided by margin of error, that is margin of error is the based on the precision. So for example, we have the Z score, which is the standardized confidence level, uh, 1.96 is for the 95% confidence level. Population standard deviation, uh, if you don't know, we take 0 0.5, and then we take 1 minus population standard deviation 1 minus 0 0.5 and divided by um, if the margin of error is 5% then 95% uh, 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 accurate then 0 0.05 we divide 1.0.5 we divide by 0 .0 0 0.05 and to the scale and what we get is 385 subjects or observations that are required in the sample. So let's look at um, a research question. Do staff cope up with immense amount of data in digital companies for customer responsiveness? And then we can look at a theory uh, that uh, that is akin with the research problem. Um, and if you look at the uh, theory of work adjustment, it's defined as, defined work adjustment as continuous and dynamic process by which a worker seeks to achieve and maintain correspondence with the work environment. And then we state the null hypothesis uh, as staff attitude 
influence customer responsiveness. So we state that in relation to our research question. We use the theory and state in relation to our research question. So staff attitude influence customer responsiveness. So that is our null hypothesis. We use staff attitude as independent variable and we use customer responsiveness as dependent variable. So for us to measure, um, to make it measurable, attitude, staff attitude, we can obtain by uh, staff attitudinal questionnaire score by giving to the staff to fill it out. And for the attribute, uh, we can uh, measure it as the response time to the customer from the customer inquiry uh, to customer response, verbal or written response, response time. So we can test the null hypothesis by using averages in the sample uh, tested for uh, alternative understanding and compare with the null or the population uh, understanding and compare the two means and see whether uh, there is a uh, difference, a statistical difference between the two, um, two means. So we can compare the two means uh, and with the population and with the sample and see whether a sample a mean is different from the population mean because the sample, if it is representative, then it, it it represents the population. So what it means is that the, there's a new understanding. If if there's a difference, significant difference, then it shows that the existing understanding or null hypothesis uh, is not is not true, and uh, uh, that it is falsified. Often we look at the relationship. That is the relationship between the um, uh, customer attitude, uh, staff attitude and the customer responsiveness. And uh, we can look at whether that relationship is, is significant, it's uh, statistically uh, different. Uh, in our null hypothesis, we state that, uh, that uh, uh, staff attitude influence customer responsiveness and if it doesn't influence then uh, there's a, a new understanding because null hypothesis is that it influences but if it doesn't influence then there is a new understanding. So when null hypothesis does not equal the alternative hypothesis and statistically if there's a difference uh, then uh, uh, there's a, a new understanding that has emerged. So what we have is uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and we can compare the two. We can compare the means, the averages, we can also compare the relationship or the correlations. When we test the hypothesis, there can be two types of errors. The hypothesis are tested to falsify the null hypothesis. So type one error is the first one. It is where we erroneously reject the null hypothesis. And type two error is we, where we erroneously accept the null hypothesis. So the type 1 error is where we erroneously reject um, that uh, uh, because hypothesis testing is to reject the hypothesis, but if it is erroneously rejected, that is called the type 1 error. For us to, to find out whether the, um, it is correctly testing, the hypothesis is correctly test is been tested, then we have to look at the power of the sample. So we determine the statistical power of a 
of a hypothesis test uh, that is to ensure that our testing correctly rejects the null hypothesis. When we want to look at the, uh, the power of a, a hypothesis testing in a sample, we, have, we need three aspects. One is alpha, the other is beta, the third is power. Power is equal to one minus beta. Alpha is what we is the is the level of of uh, non-confidence that we have. So if you have 100% confidence, alpha is zero. If you have 99% confidence in our findings, then alpha is one percent. Beta is something that we have to calculate based on um, various characteristics like sample size and so forth. Uh, it is estimated and then based on the beta alpha uh, then we determine the power. So in type 1 error we recheck, erroneously recheck the null hypothesis. It is an example of this is where uh, null hypothesis is in, in court of law, defendant is innocent, and this is to safeguard innocent people being convicted, and what we require is a very high level of confidence. Uh, so, so what we do is to decrease the type 1 error, we increase the confidence level, we can increase to, for example, from 99, 95% to 99%, so that uh, the, the alpha becomes 1%. But when we increase the, the uh, confidence level and alpha is decreased, beta, uh, the beta increases. So they have a reverse relationship. Beta is accepting is, is accepting the null hypothesis. That means when we have such a large level of estimated confidence, we can erroneously accept the, the hypothesis, null hypothesis. For example, when, um, when you're screening skilled migrants for, uh, for a country uh, and uh, uh, you might uh, accept, for example, for, for experience, you might accept overseas experience as equivalent. So what we are doing is that you are increasing the, the acceptance uh, because your, your level of confidence has increased. So there's more acceptance there when you accept the beta. Uh, we are, in, in fact, increasing the beta because we are erroneously accepting the null hypothesis. That is, we are erroneously accepting that overseas uh, experience as equivalent to domestic experience. So we have to strike a balance between the two. So when the power increases, a uh, statistical power of the study, of uh, the sample, the alpha uh, we have to increase the, the uh, alpha we have to decrease because power is 1 minus beta uh, so beta decreases then the power increases then the alpha or the, the margin of error uh, uh, increases then the power also increases but when the confidence level that is the opposite of alpha decreases, power increases. So in we have to strike a balance because when alpha increase, beta decrease. In other words, when we decrease the confidence level, the power increase, the statistical power increase. But in scientific studies, uh, we want to increase the level of confidence. In this
business studies will set the level of confidence at 95 percent this means the alpha at the probability of committing type 1